do your children or kids read, have read your books or do they give any feedbacks to you? Oh, they did. And especially, um, I've mentioned in the earlier on that my daughter was actually a few my children had reading problems. And I know that's why it's really important for children to read your book. And I give them my pages, before well, I'll read whatever books, and I give them pages to read. And I found that they didn't know a word, that they struggled on a word. And they said, oh, I don't know what that means. What's that word? Or, oh, our, our chapter was too long, or it was too dense, and um, that I stu struggle. And it's not my business to make it a struggle for a child to read. It's my business to make it easy to read. So I will go back and change the word, or the, the paragraph, or the page, or the chapter, if whatever I have to do, because um, my business was to make my own children who I was reading able to read it. And it's so strange because my books in Ireland, I go to lots of schools, and they always say to me, oh, yeah, you have them, the, the, the people who are dyslexic, or the people who are poor readers are struggling at school, they say, we're doing the, our book, the, your book with them. And loads of times they get next to children saying, it's the first book they ever finished. But they're so proud that they can read it because the story is so strong and brings them in. And it's so strange, even if one of the also trees in French, mm -hmm. I get down to people saying it's the first book in French that they read. You know, uh, it, it, it seems to be even it's translated, it's still very simple. And that even, um, I think it's been used with poor readers, countries across the world, I don't know, but it seems to be they can read it too. Mm -hmm. But they always say to them, I would say, it's a kind of a shame they say to all of the it with the, the poor readers, and well, they're class reading it. And I always say, oh, and I go to school, can I, can I go and see them, that small group of six or eight children, talk to them first privately, they can read about a connection before we go on and talk to their class. Because I don't understand what where they're coming from with my own children. So you're thinking this is the gestures so, and the feedback is so important. Oh. It is, and children then, and often actually when I'm out and when I talk, sometimes I might be getting a new book and an idea yeah. for a book, I'll say to children, and sometimes I have two ideas, they're both good ideas, I'm not sure which one to go to do it. And I go into a school and I say, okay, I have two ideas for books, and they're both really good. And I say, can we have a vote? Which do you think I should do? And they didn't want far before I do this one. I remember I was going to do a book about the Northern Ireland problem, you know, the North Ireland problem we have in Ireland. And I went into so many classrooms and said to children, I'm going to write this really nice book, good book about the North Ireland. Absolutely no way they want to be writing that because it's too soon and too near. And the school children, no matter what school I went to, they had no interest in me writing it. And I said, well, I could make a really good book about it. Just did not want to do it. So uh, when children gave me that kind of massive feedback, of, you know, don't waste your time doing it. So I didn't do it. And um, no matter what came back to it, maybe time, another 10 years, I'll be able to do it. But at the moment, no. But, uh, and also, some of my covers. Some of my publishers give me a cover, and if they give me two or three covers, and I go and show them to the children in school, and they're school, and it happens at the same time. And I say, oh, What cover do you like? I say, Oh, this one, no, no, that one, this one. So, um, you know, I, I say to publishers, I've shown it to a few hundred children, this is the reaction I'm getting, you know. So, um, there you go, my audience, of course, I'm going to say it to them. I'm really looking with them, and I, they're so honest, you know, they'll tell me what they think and everything, so it's very important. So are your kids and most of your books? Right. Uh, your kids and most of your books, and uh, and there are any uh, represent representations of them in your book? Of my own children. Yeah. Well, I suppose um, I would never use them to totally paint, but in London, the whole century is dedicated to my daughter Mandy, and she's an eldest. And in the book, the eldest daughter is minding her little brother and little sister. Mm -hmm. And I think um, in families. That's always the way. So um, bits of them come into it because the way an, an older daughter, and I think um, you know, looks after the younger ones is always the same. So it's not exactly her, but bits of it are. But just having children around and, and you know how they work and how they are. But then the children that are in my books are creations of my mind. They're not my own children. I have my own children are interesting enough. I don't need to put them in a book. They have their own lives and they're. They're my absolute darlings, and I adore them, and so I place them, and my grandchildren now as well. So, um, but my children become my books, they create themselves in my heart and my mind, and I write them, 
and um, I was very lucky that they're interesting characters, and I liked the interesting characters. I'd say a lot of them are not perfect, but they, um, they always have little flaws and things like that, little things that do wrong, um, but they're but they're, they're children and they're in my books. Um, as you have mentioned, that children's fiction, generally speaking, they are very clear and succinct. Yeah. Succinct, yeah. yes, and with no pattern. So, do you think children's fiction are taken seriously in academia? Um, I, yeah, I think sometimes that happens. Yeah, it's true. I think um, you know they go for a lot of literary fiction. Is you know, and a lot of literary fiction that people will, will put a, talk a lot about. You know, if you go and look for it in five or ten years' time, it has disappeared, it hasn't lasted. But I think that, and the same with some children's books will come out and they won't last. But I think if you write a good children's book and you really um, structure it well, you keep your writing very simple and very clear and, um, and have a good, strong story that can reach people. My books are mostly set in Ireland, and I would never expect them to be selling in China or Japan or out in the Middle East or any or Africa. I would never expect Australia, Canada. I would never expect that because the worlds are so different. But yeah, why wouldn't it? Because I grew up reading Nora Ingalls Wilder's books, Little House on the Prairie. Um, I grew up with reading, you know, American loads of American novels. I read um, Any Little Detectives. I, I read loads of books um, you know, by, by other authors around the world, and why wouldn't the same thing happen? I think if, it's a, if you write it in such a way that the people are interested in other countries, but, they, but it has to be able to, to go across borders, it has to be, you don't, when you write it, you don't know what's going to do that, you're not conscious of that. But because you don't pad it down, weigh it down with too many references to things that will overwhelm a reader from another country. But there's enough of a clue there that you create a, you know, I mean, the books are just about Chinese people living in tall apartments in Beijing who know nothing about the Irish countryside. And they're reading a book about children who are bleeding and have, being attacked by dogs, fishing in the river, seeing a workhouse, being evicted from their cottage. Very different from the lives they lead or a kid living in a big house in America and you know and yet they they can read it and they can understand it. And um, so that's the really wonderful thing about um, writing, whether it's an adult book novel. But I think though um you think about literary in academia, mm -hmm. academia I think does undervalue. Some some for colleges now do do children's literature and people can study children's literature. I think children's literature feeds into academia. Mm -hmm and feeds into good writing for people who will go on and write. And if you talk to writers, um, they will all mention the books they read when they were younger. And they are very important stepping stones to them becoming writers or poets or playwrights. And um, it's funny within, um, it's funny now that Ireland is finding that it's not a barrier, that people will respect a book. A good book is a good book whether it's, you know, whatever age it's for, or it's considered literary. My books have won liter literature awards though as well, which is really nice too. But, but I do think that is a point. And it's a shame when it happens that, um, you know, people don't respect good children's literature. Um. So, uh, as you've mentioned, that many of your stories transcend the borders of Ireland. Yeah. How about, do they have an educational function that also transcends the borders? I, I think so. I think, um, I, I don't, I love history, I'm passionate about history myself. I'm passionate about social change and women's issues. So, I can't help but write about what I'm interested in. So, um, these things happen. I'm drawn to my book, I'm interested in. I'm interested in history, so I write books about history. And I have to research and find out about history. And by osmosis, people who read the book, or the kids who read the book, or the adults or rebel sisters, when they read the book, they're finding out lots about history. Stuff I didn't know because I've put in the book. Um, I wrote a book called Blue Horse, which is about travellers in Ireland. And that book um, really, you know, is looking at that whole problem we have in our society, which is a problem they have in other countries too. But, um, so it kind of 
drawn to things that are a bit different, difficult to write about. And um, I'm not interested in writing about someone just living in a house, um, you know, trying on fashion, you know, listening to radio, trying to kiss a boy. I'm not really interested in that. But those people who interested in writing books about that, let them do it. I'm interested in more different things. And about families and about, you know, the issues I care about are different, you know. So I'm not saying anything wrong with those books, they're fantastic, and kids love reading them. But just, I'm, I don't need to write it, you know. So I'm writing about what I care about and what interests me. And um, I'm very lucky of good publishers, and they kind of let me write about what I want to write. They know, you know, I could do it. Probably do it well and make money, but that's not what I'm trying to do. Thank you very much. I enjoyed talking to you all. Thank you so much.